Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel. During this short application exercise, we're going to build a functional circuit on the motor control trainer board by wiring up the three-wire magnetic motor starter we introduced in the two and three-wire magnetic motor starter lecture, available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched this lecture yet or only dimly recall its contents, please take the time to do so now. Additionally, this exercise operates under the presumption you've watched the preceding lectures detailing the progressive construction of the motor control trainer board. An extremely common three-wire magnetic motor starter, as implemented in the above reference lecture, makes use of a push-button station consisting of a maintained contact e-stop and momentary contact stop and start buttons. Additionally, this three-wire magnetic motor starter makes use of an auxiliary holding contact which maintains the last asserted state of the system, which allows an operator to press and release the start button. The circuit should exhibit no or low voltage protection characteristics in that if there is an unexpected loss in restoration of power, the system will not automatically restart because the holding circuit has dropped out. Thus an operator is protected from the sudden restart of the motor driven load. Only when an operator makes the conscious decision to restart the system does it do so. Additionally, this circuit should exhibit similar behavior if the motor ever entered overload conditions and the overload element was given a chance to cool and reset. The system should not automatically restart until an operator makes the conscious decision to do so. Three-wire control circuits like this one are commonly used in scenarios where the sudden unexpected starting of the motor-driven load may damage the system or operator. Before we begin, let me remind you I am not an electrician and you cannot use anything in this or any other lecture as professional electrical advice. Follow the rules. Follow the code. It's there for a reason to protect people and property from hazards arising from the use of electricity. Some of the material and techniques you may see in this lecture may not be utilized for a permanent approved installation, but is for demonstration purposes only. This content has been developed for edification only. While reasonable care has been exercised with respect to its accuracy, I assume no responsibility for errors, omissions, or suitability for any application or misapplication of its contents. First, we need to establish a start state and assemble the necessary components. We've already built a base motor control trainer board. The base state consists of a circuit breaker, control transformer, and manual motor starter. Note the control transformer is between the circuit breaker and the manual motor starter. The control transformer is not expressly illustrated in our first primary circuit. You'll need to remove any and all previous circuit connections and return it to just the circuit breaker, control transformer, and manual motor starter. During the wiring a two-wire magnetic motor starter hand-off auto circuit lecture available at the Big Bad Tech channel, we added a maintain contact three-position selector switch, a momentary contact push button, and two pilot lamps. We'll need to slightly rearrange our push button stations to account for the additional devices necessary for this lab. We won't be using all the devices in this particular lecture. However, this setup allows us a base configuration for later applications exercises. First, Remove the red momentary contact push button from the first push button station. In its place, substitute a red pilot light. The first push button station should now include a maintain contact three position selector switch and three pilot lamps, red, green, and yellow. Orient yourself to the contacts as seen from this upright and concealed perspective. Flip the top over and orient yourself to the contacts as seen from this revealed perspective. Don't wire up the wrong contact. In the second push button station, install and maintain contact e-stop and three momentary contact push buttons, colored red, green, and yellow. With the exception of the e-stop, each push button should have a mechanically interlocked set of normally closed and normally open contacts. Orient yourself to the contacts as seen from this upright and concealed perspective. Flip the top over and orient yourself to the contacts as seen from this revealed perspective. Don't wire up the wrong contact. Next, if you haven't done so already, we need to assemble the primary circuit. If you think about it, the primary circuit utilized by the three-wire magnetic motor starter is exactly like the one we built with the two-wire magnetic motor starter hand-off auto circuit lecture. It consists of a circuit breaker, manual motor starter, contactor, and overload, the states of which determine the status of the motor. Really, the only thing that changes is the pilot level ladder logic. For this reason, you'll follow the exact same assembly procedures 
as detailed in the two-wire magnetic motor starter handoff auto circuit lecture, which I'll only briefly skim through after we've constructed this pilot level ladder logic. Let's begin by assembling the pilot level circuit. First, let's make our job easy by inserting terminal and wire numbers on our ladder logic diagram using the skills we established in the ladder logic documentation lecture available at the Big Bad Tech channel. By all means, pause the lecture and take your best shot. If you number the terminals and wires correctly, your ladder logic diagram should look like this. Note wire one is the left hand vertical upright and wire two is the right hand vertical upright. Next, see if you can mentally walk yourself through this circuit using the skills I demonstrated in the wiring the alarm circuit lecture available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you'll recall, I emphatically recommended you wire a ladder logic diagram left to right, top to bottom, rung by rung. By all means, pause the lecture and do so. Ask yourself where the wire of interest comes from and where it goes to in that rung and that rung only. Continue in this fashion left to right. Only when you land at the grounded X2 side of the control transformer is that rung complete and you are allowed to move down to the next rung. This saves you a lot of second guessing and backtracking and ensures a completed functional product at the end. Start establishing good work practices now. Quick hint, wire numbers are best thought of as nodes. You'll note wire four and five are pooled connections and only convenience dictates which terminal is physically employed to the best advantage. You cannot make this decision until you're actually physically wiring up a real circuit. All right, with your mental tour complete, let's begin wiring up the circuit. See if your initial assumptions match how I wire this up. Start by making sure the system is safe to work on. Open the manual motor starter. Open the circuit breaker. Unplug it, lock out the plug, and tag it out. Let's start by wiring rung one. Wire one comes out of the X1 terminal block. Wire two goes into the E-stop one one terminal. Wire three comes out of the E-stop one two terminal. Wire three goes into the stop one one terminal. Wire four comes out of the stop one two terminal. Wire four goes into the start two three terminal. Wire five comes out of the start two four terminal. Wire five goes into the M1 contactor coil A1 terminal. Wire six comes out of the A2 terminal of the M1 contactor coil. Wire six goes into the conveniently available 9-5 terminal of the normally closed overload contact. Wire 2 comes out of the 9-6 terminal of the normally closed overload contact. Wire 2 goes to the X2 terminal block. We can now move on to rung 2. Rung 2 also starts with wire 4. Given wire 4 is better thought of as a node, we have two options available and only convenience dictates our choice. I could start either from the 1-2 terminal of the stop or the 2-3 terminal of the start. I'm choosing to start at the 2-3 terminal of the start button. Wire 4 comes out of the 2-3 terminal of the start push button. Wire 4 goes into the 1-3 terminal of the normally open auxiliary holding contact. Wire 5 comes out of the 1-4 terminal of the normally open auxiliary holding contact. Where does wire 5 go? I've got two choices. Either the 2-4 terminal of the start push button or the A1 terminal of the contactor coil. It doesn't matter. They're both the same pooled connection offered by wire 5. However, I'm going to choose the A1 terminal of the contactor coil since it's closer than the push button. Don't waste wire. Don't waste time. Wire 5 goes into the A1 terminal of the contactor coil. Rung 2 is done, as is our pilot level ladder logic. Note how moving left to right, top to bottom, we never had to backtrack or ran the risk of an open or short-circuited rung. Use this method and you will have a greater chance of success in less time. Don't use this method and you'll have a greater chance of failure in more time. Your choice. Let's introduce one minor modification to our pilot level ladder logic. Let's include a green pilot lamp in parallel to the contactor coil and normally closed overload contact. This pilot lamp isn't functionally necessary, 
However, it can be used to test and troubleshoot the pilot level ladder logic independent from the primary circuit. Wire 5 comes out of the 2-4 terminal of the start push button. Wire 5 goes into the 1 terminal of the green pilot lamp. Wire 2 comes out of the 2 terminal of the green pilot lamp. Wire 2 goes into the X2 terminal block. Let's now build the primary circuit. As I mentioned previously, this is a repeat of the primary circuit we made use of in the wiring a two-wire magnetic motor starter handoff auto circuit. The plug, circuit breaker, and motor starter should already be connected in series with one another, and the contactor and overload should already be interlocked together. All we've got to do is route three wires out of the manual motor starter. The black, red, and blue wires serve this purpose. These same three wires go into the L1, L2, and L3 inputs of the contactor and overload assembly. Three wires come out of the bottom T1, T2, and T3 outputs of the overload. These wires are routed to the terminal block on our motor mount base. That's it. Our three-wire magnetic motor starter is ready to rock. Let's test just the pilot ladder logic. When the system is unlocked, plugged in and only the circuit breaker closed and the manual motor starter is kept open, the pilot level circuit does a whole lot of nothing. That's the point. An operator has not initiated the start sequence. When an operator presses and releases start, the pilot light comes on and the contactor physically closes. If the manual motor starter was closed, the motor would have also started. When an operator presses and releases stop, the pilot light goes off and the contactor physically opens. When an operator presses and releases start, the pilot lamp comes on and the contactor physically closes. When an operator presses and releases the e-stop, the pilot light goes off and the contactor physically opens. When an operator tries to restart the system, the maintain contact e-stop prevents the system from restarting. Only when an operator resets the e-stop into the closed position will the system restart. It looks like our pilot level ladder logic works as intended. Note by closing the circuit breaker and keeping the manual motor starter open, we were capable of verifying the functionality of the pilot level ladder logic only without worrying about the primary circuit. This utility offers a level of functional isolation for test and troubleshooting purposes. Now let's include the primary circuit by closing the manual motor starter. When the system is unlocked, plugged in, and both the circuit breaker and manual motor starter are closed, the system initially does a whole lot of nothing. That's the point. An operator has not initiated the start sequence. When an operator presses and releases start, the pilot light comes on, the contactor physically closes, and the motor rotates in one direction. When an operator presses and releases stop, the pilot light goes off, the contactor physically opens, and the motor free spins to a halt. When an operator presses and releases start, the pilot lamp comes on, the contactor physically closes, and the motor rotates in the same direction. When our operator presses and releases the e-stop, the pilot lamp goes off, the contactor physically opens, and the motor free spins to a halt. When an operator tries to restart the system, the maintained contact e-stop prevents the system from restarting. Only when an operator resets the e-stop into the closed position will the system restart. It looks like our three-wire control circuit works as intended. Let's discuss some features of three-wire control circuits before we bring this lecture to a close. Recall that three-wire control circuits are low or no voltage protection circuits, and that if power is lost and restored, the system will not suddenly restart since the holding circuit has dropped out. Consider what happens when in the run state the circuit breaker is opened. As anticipated, the contactor opens and the motor free spins to a halt. When power is restored to the system, note the motor does not suddenly spring to life since the holding circuit has dropped out. For this reason, three-wire control circuits exhibiting no or low voltage protection are employed in scenarios where the sudden unexpected restarting of a motor may harm personnel or damage the process. Only when an operator or system makes the conscious decision to active or restart does the system do so. Additionally, Consider a three-wire control circuit making use of an overload in the automatic reset mode. In this case, I'm simulating an overload event by pushing in the manual test button. The open overload element signals the contactor to open as expected. When the overload element in an automatic mode cools and resets, 
i.e. when I stop testing it, it automatically resets. As previously, note the motor does not suddenly spring to life since the holding circuit has dropped out. Only when an operator makes the conscious decision to actively restart the system does it do so. All right, this about wraps up this brief applications exercise. In conclusion, we built and tested a three-wire magnetic motor starter using our motor control trainer board. Additions for this lab include a maintain contact e-stop and two momentary contact push buttons. Part numbers appear in the orientation of the motor control trainer kit and the information section associated with this video. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource. Be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates. Thank <laughs> you.